a wonderful place for a family vacation. It has something for every age. It was pictures of surfing at Waikiki that sold my children on going. You know, you don't have to be a terrific swimmer. You see, there are different kinds of surf, and the surf at Waikiki is a wahini surf. Wahini means woman, so this is a gentle surf, gentle enough for beginners. The first thing the boys did when we got there was rush down to the beach to make arrangements for a board. You rent them by the hour, complete with beach boy if you feel you want help. But my boys wanted to save their money, so they decided to teach themselves. I've never tried it, but I hear it's quite easy. <laughs> I love the people who say it's easy. It's easy like ski jumping or playing the violin. <laughs> it's easy if you know how to do it. <laughs> I tried it. I didn't think it was so easy. <laughs> I will say this, though. The beginning is easy. You see, all you have to do is lie on your board and paddle out to where the long rollers gather. That's about oh, an eighth of a mile from the shore. And there you lie and wait until a roller comes along that suits you. Now this is part of the trick, learning to judge a wave. When one does come in that's right, the next trick is to catch it at the right tilt so it'll carry you in. Keith had beginner's luck, but Marty and Don lost it. <laughs> so you lie and wait again, and when the right wave comes, you paddle furiously. Sometimes you make it, and then again, learn to stand on the board. He made it. And Marty made it, too. And Donnie. Well, that's pretty good for the first day. Not too graceful, but maybe that'll come with the next installment. <laughs> After a few days, though, Donnie got so good, he was doing acrobatics with a beach boy. If Don learns that fast, when he goes back, he might try the big surf at Makaha. This is where they hold the International Surfing Championships in January. Have to be an expert to surf here, because these waves have 30 and 40 foot slopes. Unbelievable. They told me if a man falls off here, he has to be able to hold his breath for two minutes because it might take him that long to get up to the surface. I spent most of my time on the neighbor islands. As you know, there are eight of them. Here, I'll show you on the map. See, here is Oahu. This is Honolulu, and here is Pearl Harbor. This is Kauai, fourth largest. It could be easily reached by plane in about 40 minutes. This one is privately owned. Here is Molokai, good spot for people who like to get away from it all. Wonderful hunting, especially for deer. Lanai is all pineapple plantations. Maui, a lot of sugar cane, but much more than that. Excellent hotels, plenty to see and do. And here is Hawaii, the big island where I spent most of my time. This section here is called the Kona Coast, and it's famous the world over for deep sea fishing. You rent the boat by the day, and the skipper furnishes everything, rods and bait. The hotel gives you your food and drink, so it's great fun whether you fish or not. The boats go out, and while they're out, they talk to each other on their shortwave radio. Everybody gathers on the lawn at Kona Inn to eavesdrop on the interboat conversation. Hey, Charlie, how'd you do? Couple of dolphins, how about you? Got everything but what we went after. Tuna, sailfish, even the barracuda. No marlin, though. You guys just don't know where to look. We got two of the big fellas. Any day with Marlin, <laughs> I'll eat one of them, tail and all. Get out your chopsticks, boy. We're coming in loaded. 
weekend I was there, they caught four marlin on Saturday and five on Sunday. One of them weighed a thousand pounds. As soon as the fish is taken off the boat, it's put on a truck and rushed over to the Kona Inn, where they make quite a ceremony of weighing it in. A bell announces a new arrival, and everybody rushes out to watch it being strung up and to take pictures of the proud angler. This fellow weighed 595 pounds. No record, but it's still three times as big as the fisherman, and it puts up a terrific fight. This man had never fished for marlin before, so he had a right to feel quite proud of himself. Anyone would enjoy it here even if he didn't fish, especially if he likes to take it easy, has comfortable rooms and excellent food. But best of all is the people. Everyone is so relaxed, it's easy to get to know them. I met a fisherman here from Kauai, Tony Texeira, flying fisherman. He spent thousands of weary hours in a boat trying to guess where the big fish might be. But now it's all different. He goes out early in the morning in this little plane and scouts the coastline for miles. When he sees a school of fish, they can be depended on to stay in that area for hours or even days. So he radios his crew and they waste no time in getting there. We roared around the island, sometimes so low you could almost reach and catch a whitecap or spear the fish on the coral reef. He was a good man to fly with, as he knew the islands and loved them. Everyone should at least take a flying trip to the neighbor islands, if for no other reason than to see how beautiful they are from the air. There's tremendous variety, acres and acres of sugarcane and pineapple. lovely valleys and meandering rivers. Waikiki Beach is beautiful from the air too, with the reef, the Royal Hawaiian, the Moana Surf Rider, and the Princess Kailani, to mention only a few of the many fine hotels. And look at the view from our room. We could have sat on that balcony all day quite happily, but there was so much to do. The hotels have an excellent program of activities, and this was a moo-moo race for the teenagers. <laughs> there are lots of young people there, and I love that, don't you? They make the place so full of life. And you could learn to do the hula, too. Every hotel has free lessons in the hula. It's not as easy as it looks. The most important part of the dance is the hand movements, because the hands tell a story. As a matter of fact, ancient Hawaiians passed down the story of their race through the dance since they had no written language. And there were lessons in flower arranging, too. Beautiful plant life in Hawaii. Plenty of fresh and unusual flowers and greens to work with. I enjoyed the fashion shows, too. The hotels had them on boat days or during luncheon, and they certainly taught me not to buy clothes before I go next time. You can get everything you need right there, because they're produced right there. In fact, this has become a big business, and Hawaiian fabrics and sport clothes are sold in smart shops all over the world. And of course, let's not forget shopping. It's one of my favorite pastimes. <laughs> and there were so many things to buy, all kinds of knickknacks, outrigger canoes and tiki gods and beautiful things made of wood. Colorful ceramics with a Polynesian flavor and carvings of lava rock that remind you of Easter Island. The children loved the grab bag with balloon fish and uli ulis for the hula. There in the international market, there's a man who prints Polynesian designs on fabrics with a silk screen. His is a one-man operation, all hand done.
think it's fascinating to see a design suddenly appear through that thin stencil of silk. This man designs fabrics primarily for South Sea type costumes, lava lavas, pereas, sarongs. If you want to go native, you can have them made up practically while you wait. You can't be there long without at least getting the urge to go native. Did you find that true too? You know, besides all these things to see and do, the people themselves are just naturally so gay and joyous that it's contagious, I guess. I guess that's what makes your inhibitions disappear. Before you know it, you're wearing flowers in your hair and aloha shirts and learning to do the hula. <laughs> we went to a Hawaiian picnic, a ho'olaulea, they call it, that the hotels give. And although there were professional entertainers, the guests really stole the show. Can you imagine the world, a group of complete strangers getting together and having so much fun? No, I can't. I guess it's because the hospitality of everyone you meet is so genuine. You can't be there long without responding. We Britishers are supposed to be so reserved. I went to one of those ho o la layers, learned to do a jolly good hula too, you know. I think fun's in the air, blown in by the trade winds. Kodak show, which is staged twice a week so camera enthusiasts can get good pictures. When they ask if anyone wanted to learn the hula, half the audience rushed out onto the field to take a lesson. <laughs> I never laughed so hard in my life. <laughs> You're right, it is in the air. Have fun, forget your troubles, lose your inhibitions, live it up. As Pan American says, the thing to do with life is live it. And you certainly can do it here. He really caught the rhythm, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I love these Tahitian dancers. I wanted so much to learn how to do this dance, come back and show my friends. But they tell me you have to start at the age of two to develop this kind of coordination. At the end of the show, the audience is permitted on the field for close-ups. And after that, the performers pose for you. They're very obliging, not like some places where the hand is always out. From that standpoint, Hawaii is a photographer's paradise because nobody minds posing for a picture. It's all part of the fun. One of the things that interested us was the volcanoes, so we flew over to the Big Island. Something I'd never seen before, these five-foot panoramic windows, so you can appreciate the view and also get good pictures. I'd always thought it would be dangerous to go anywhere near an active volcano, but that just shows how wrong you can be. Our government has set them aside as a national park, and every precaution has been taken to make them safe. You can drive right up to the rim of the fire pit of Kilauea. The main island of Hawaii is geologically a child, possibly not more than 10 million years old. It was built by five great volcanoes, two of which are still tremendously active. The fire pit in the heart of the crater is so vast it's impossible to get any idea of its size. When we were there, it looked quite cold and dead. But these marks that look like bird tracks are actually huge fissures many feet across it from time to time, open up into molten fountains of lava. Yes, I know. When there's an eruption, people go to see it the way you go to fireworks. The islands are ablaze with excitement. Airlines run special excursions and papers carry daily bulletins. Literally thousands watch the spectacle in cars all around the rim and down right on the floor of the crater within a thousand feet of the fire pit. I stayed there all night it's like looking inside the door of hell. Makes you feel pretty puny. How magnificent. Oh, you were lucky. Mm. Well, we 
we went to Puna, where the last eruption took place, I was relieved to learn that our scientists, uh, volcanologists, I think they call them, have been able to predict the recent eruptions, so there's been no loss of life and very little property damage. The roads get covered up and they just bulldoze it off. Even do that with the fields and it doesn't seem to affect the fertility of the soil at all. We climbed right up to the top of one of the cones. Tough going and in some places the cinders are still hot, but it's worth it. The colors are so beautiful. Reds and blacks and grays and still steaming. This is one of the Earth's rare sights. stone with what gorgeous color. Who oh, no, knows fascinating now, but you should have seen it when the lava was flowing. I spent night after night there watching the show. the lava flows at very high speeds, as much as 30 miles an hour. I suppose the fact that the lava is black accounts for the black beaches you find on the big island. The children had a wonderful day with some friends they met at the black sands of Kalapana, just out of Hilo. The sand here looked like powdered coal, but actually it's just like white sand. Feels the same, brushes off. It's a delightful spot, and not too many people know about it. Speaking of interesting people, in Honolulu we met Bill Irwin, who's a protege of Litek, the famous Tahitian painter, paints on black velvet. This is a very exacting technique since a bad brush stroke can't be corrected. You just have to start all over again. It takes Bill several weeks to complete a painting. He specializes in Polynesian character studies and portraits and has quite a thriving business. Here's a picture he did of me. Very interesting. What an amazing technique. It is interesting, isn't it? By the way, did you get to Maui? Beautiful island, one of my favorites. I took the road to Lahaina late in the afternoon when the light was just right. And the scenery, well, judge for yourself. lucky enough to catch a hukilau. This is a community fish pull, I guess you'd call it. The men take the net out in a boat and drop it and bring the two ends back to the shore. Then the people pull it in, either by means of a winch or by hand. Here at Hanalei, they had a winch on one end and the people walked round and round. Half the town pulled on the other end. Everybody joins in. The closer the net gets to shore, the more people join in. 
because I was told that everyone who puts his hand on the net gets a share of the fish. They caught about 600 pounds that day. go to a really authentic luau where they cook the pig in an emu. An emu is an underground oven. They fill a hole in the ground with special rocks that have been heated. The pig is also filled with hot rocks and wrapped in leaves and burlap and then covered up to cook for hours. When they bring it out, that little pig is about the most succulent dish you ever tasted. And pork, you know, is the central theme of a luau. Other dishes are moa. That's chicken cooked in a special way, and wala kalua, baked yams accompanied by pineapple, sweetened with coconut syrup. Lomi lomi, a salmon dish, and of course luau, which is taro leaves that taste sort of like spinach. And haupia, that's a pudding made from coconut cream. Oh, I forgot to mention poi, which is a paste made of taro root. It's supposed to be eaten with the fingers. They say that if you stay on the islands long enough and eat it often enough, you get to like it. Anyhow, you'll surely like everything else. When I'm in Waikiki, I usually go to the luau's at Don the Beachcombers. Don's a friend of mine, and the shows that follow his luau are well staged. Most people are surprised to find that there are many different kinds of hula. The sacred hula, the comic hula, one little performer, the cutest trick I ever saw, does a comic hula about a tutu. Tutu means grandmother who went to a party and drank too freely. She was singing an old melody of an Tutu will show you how to do that hula me on me on me. That's the drink of the South Island, eh? Oh, 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 nah, oh, tutu, eh? And now she's doing the hula rum boogie, eh? Tutu is going home now to her hale by the kahakai, eh? Aina iya mai kapuana, and that's the medley of my tutu, eh? The Samoan knife dance makes your hair stand on end. The dancer tosses about a wicked looking knife that's razor sharp. And to make it even more hair raising, it's flaming at both ends. Samoan, Tahitian, Japanese Pinot gives the islands a very special flavor. Ayala o pele o Hawaii ea ke ha a mai la e mau kele ea. I could go on talking about Hawaii till the end of time. I don't think it will ever wear off. Hey, Mom, there's Mauna Kea. Better take a last look at Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> 